fucking copying the summoning sword again? Um, yeah. What's wrong with that? Also, it's like the first time of me doing it. It's not again. Ugh. Be original, man. We don't need to copy anyone, you know? I hate copying. We edit the entire thing. Okay, okay. Jesus fucking Christ. But will you pay me? Will you fucking pay me? <laughs> no. Ah, oh, you fucking ass! Speedruns is a very impressive thing in every game that has a task to complete. Either it's a task to save Princess Peach in any Super Mario game by using backwards jumps. I cannot believe it! <laughs> or completing Minecraft in a matter of seconds. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> Well, maybe not seconds, but still. Speedruns fit for anything as long as it has a task to do in it. And Bimage Drive just so happens to be having a bunch of tasks, in form of scenarios, bus routes, and time trials, for some speedrunners to complete. Today in this video, I'll show you one of the most underrated Bimage speedrunning community, and when it's all started. Sadly, I didn't find the origin of the speedruns of this game, but the only video I found that has a speedrunning start is the video from 7 years ago. It's a video titled BMNG Leap of Death Speedrun by Jimmy Broadband that was beaten in just 30 minutes and 32 seconds. An impressive amount of time if you know how tall and hardcore this map is to complete. In that video, Jamie is driving Gavril Roma off-road configuration of a rather weird engine sound. Rock and roll! Keep in mind, this was a long time ago before developers added new engine sounds for each engine. So pretty much everyone made their own engine sound back then. Anyways, back to the speedrun. Jamie starts his speedrun at the bottom of the map, and his way is to go to the top of the map in the fastest way possible. Using his gaming wheel, Roma, and his skill, he is making his way through some obstacles and hard paths, and eventually makes his way to his own end of the map, and finishes it in 30 minutes and 32 seconds. Even though this wasn't popular back then, it still started a BMNG speedrun community. In early 2017, a website called speedrun.com, which is a dedicated website for all leaderboards and speedrunning communities for various games, creates a new page for BMNG Drive with its own categories and rules. The first category is varying scenarios, but campaigns, which is similar to scenarios but they have a story in each of them. First campaigns were a rookie start, driver's training before it moved to missions, and senseless destruction. And back then there was a little amount of people in this speedrunning community back in 2017 when this page on speedrun.com was created, compared to Super Mario World speedrun community in its first days. It had only one moderator and a very small amount of people. Let's look at one of the earliest campaign speedruns that is still available and yet still impressive. On April 12, 2017, a person named Nico 3 d from Germany submitted a speedrun of a campaign, Senseless Destruction, and he completed it in just 4 minutes and 13 seconds. The video starts with the menu screen with a selection of available campaigns. Nico picks the Senseless Destruction campaign and waits for it to load. When it's about to finish loading, Nico bashes the A button on the controller to skip the intro dialogues. Once the campaign starts, Nico holds the accelerator and waits for the countdown to end. Once it starts, he starts moving. The first part of the campaign is to drop the Gabriel Roma from a high place, and this is the easiest part of this campaign. It is only the matter of not going in the wrong direction or not colliding with any of these bushes, which will slow down the car. Once the car lands on wheels, Nico holds the brake pedal and bashes the A button once again to skip the outro dialogue. Once the first part is completed, the game loads a new one, and once it's loaded, Nico uses the same method to skip dialogues, and start the second part of the campaign. 
The second part of this campaign involves two cars racing each other, with a drag race car catching fire and blue sunburst failing to stop at the end of the road. This part only needs some skill and speed, with the main obstacle is the drag car hitting you. With this part complete, he moves to the next part. This part involves a skilled position, in which you have to cross a very shaky bridge in a very heavy 50s Burnside Special. And as you can see, Nico completes it very quickly while keeping the car in the middle of the bridge. With this, we move on to the next part. This part of the campaign requires us to hit another car parked at the edge of the cliff, and this is very easy to complete for Nico. The next part is driving Gavro DC's pickup truck in various car torturing obstacles. Nico uses his best to complete the obstacles in such a way so he can actually continue driving while still holding the accelerator button. Nico drives over easier and faster bits of the track and eventually crashes into a big brick wall. With that completed, he moves to the next part. This part only requires Nico to shoot a cannon at the car. He manages to somehow shoot the cannon before the countdown ends, and he restarts this part to repeat it again, but this time after the countdown ends. This only lost him 5 seconds, but he still continued. The seventh part of the campaign is mainly off-roading, not using the third-person camera, which makes this a bit harder to complete. But Nico doesn't care about this kind of hardcore he gets, and continues his way through like a full-blown Chad. Next one is driving Gavril T-Series semi-truck downhill, with the obstacle in the form of a narrow cart of the cliff. This one is very easy, and so Nico finishes quickly. With that completed, he moves to the next one, in which he faces a challenge of landing a police car on another car. Instead of going fast, Nico decides to not press the accelerator fully and hold it a little bit less. Once he reaches the ramp, he doesn't land on a car, but he quickly lands on the ground and then fully presses the accelerator to hit a car, making the game think that the police car hit the top of the car like it's supposed to. The next and pre-last part of the campaign is to drive the ETK K-Series into a brick wall, while also jumping the car in the air. Nothing to say much about this, as it is very easy to complete. And finally, the last part is to drive the same drag car from the second part and jump across the cargo trailer, and Nico completes it quickly before the engine dies. And with that, he completes it in 8 minutes and 8 seconds. But hold on, do you remember that it said 4 minutes and 13 seconds? It was changed as the timer started when the game started loading, and it finishes loading at 33 seconds and few other places which should not include a recorded time. And with some calculations done, Nicker 3D actually completed it in 4 minutes, 13 seconds and 250 milliseconds.
Niku 2D made one of the first runs on the website once the page has been created, and with Niku 3D, other people followed up, some using their racing simulator equipment like steering wheels, pedals, shifters, or all together, or using a keyboard and mouse setup, which back then, before some of the updates, was a pure hardcore. As the time progresses, speedrun.com would add scenarios, time trials, and bus routes to the website as they also have tasks that you can complete in a quicker fashion. It is unknown when the big speedrunning event happens in this game, and so is the legendary moments happen during the runs. This doesn't stop there, as the first run to break 2 minute mark is a speedrun made by Vodaglue from... Q... 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 <coughs> Cubic! He submitted the run on January 21st, 2020, and it is one of the first runs to pass the under 3 minutes mark limit done by Hoot Wheels in 2017. Just like in Nico's run, the video starts within the selection menu, and with the timer starting on loading screen. Once it finishes loading, he uses the same method to skip dialogues, and starts the first part. Instead of going straight, Water Glue goes to the right and falls there. It is not only quicker compared to Nico's run, but it's also not taking a while for the game to register that the car is fully stopped. With that, he quickly moves to the next part. The drag race part begins, and the first thing to notice is incredible luck. Once the drag car crashed, multiple parts fell off, and one of them hits the water glue, locking his steering and eventually running into a ditch at higher speed. Okay, the shaky bridge part, and just like Nico, he completes it very easily with speed. No comment on the part of hitting a car on the edge of the cliff, as it is the same as Nico's. Same can be said for the torturing part, cannon part, and affording part the Gavril T-Series destruction part, but instead of going straight, Waterglue goes right at the edge of the cliff, without sending the truck into the air. The next part is similar to Nico's run, so nothing to say about it, and so is the same with the ETK K-Series part. And finally, the jumping drag car part. That one is done beautifully compared to Nico's run. And with that, Vodaglue finishes the run in full 10 minutes. And after a few calculations done, it sizes down to 2 minutes and 58 seconds. But this is also not stopping there, as the recent run from few days ago Ham Ham yesterday has proved that it can be done much quicker thanks to the new features discovered with the same campaign. April 16th, 2023. A person named Epix underscore I submitted a run of senseless destruction, beating the previous first place record done by Blitzen. Epix's run is similar to what we've seen prior, but it has some changes and new tactics. The run is similar to Nico's and Vodaglue's run, but it has very few other things with the run. First of all, in a drag racing car, he somehow catches a wheel that came out out of a drag race car, and then sends the car in the side and then crashes into a cliff wall. Pretty epic, and that's why I mentioned it here. Secondly, in the power of the shaky bridge, Epic shows a new bug with this campaign that hasn't been mentioned in a long time. If you drive onto a bridge and then just stop, the game will force to register this as you have successfully completed the bridge part, with that allowing you to go to the next part. And in the next part, where you hit a parked car at the edge of the cliff, he slows down so he can land the van quickly, and so make the game register that both cars have fallen. In the cannon part, before he shoots, he backs off so he can easily hit the car. Then finally, in the part where you have to hit the police car with another car, he drives away from the target and making a barrel roll. And the game force registers that the game thinks that the police car actually collided with the car, which in reality, it didn't. 
With those little tricks done, Epix has completed it in 2 minutes and 23 seconds, which is 35 seconds faster than Volley Blue Squad. So, what is the feature of the speedrunning community of this game? I don't know. All I know is that the most of the time is just speedruns of random people completing some scenarios, time trials, bus routes, etc. But who can be a good speedrunner without even having any recorded runs on the website? I know this answer, and this person is. Me out to own of a pillow for your mom an entire collection of radiation for his BMG gaming. 